Doug Meacham, Texas Christian University. Doug Meacham is the name. Directing record-setting offenses is his game. Jacksonville State, Henderson State, Samford, Houston, and this past season, TCU. In this his first season at TCU, Doug Meacham orchestrated the most dramatic offensive turnaround in Big 12 history. Last season, TCU averaged 25 points a game. This season, Meacham's Horn Frog offense is scoring just under 46 points a game. And these numbers are crazy. Prior to his arrival, TCU was ranked 88th in scoring offense and 104th in total offense. This season, Meacham's offense is second in the nation in scoring offense and fourth in total offense. This offense is also on pace to shatter program records for points, first downs, plays, passing yards, and total offense. Doug Meacham has helped turn junior quarterback Trevon Boykin into a record-setting performer. A year ago, Boykin threw for 1,200 yards and seven touchdowns. This season, Boykin has thrown for over 3,700 yards and has 30 touchdown passes. Boykin is on pace to become only the third quarterback since 2009 to average over 300 yards passing and 50 yards rushing. Those incredible numbers have resulted in a special honor for Doug Meacham. He's a Broyles Award finalist. Okay, first of all, I want to clarify something. I didn't block very much at all for those two <laughs> running backs. I just kind of knew the snap count. I got out of the way, all right? And uh, secondly, um, it's kind of embarrassing. In fact, I kind of keep it a secret that I played offensive line. I usually let the person guess what I played and I just agree with them, okay? Because I know, looking at me right now, Coach Jones is probably embarrassed at how I look because <laughs> I don't look like an offensive lineman at all, so I understand. Just wanted to, start off with saying thank you very much uh, for the selection committee, uh, for uh, Delta uh, Dental, also the Rotary Club of Little Rock, um, Coach Rules, everybody involved, the support staff that puts this together, the people that's been with us the last 24 hours have done a phenomenal job being with us and, and taking care of us and pointing us in the right direction because we are football coaches. We get lost <laughs> real easy, just like the taxi cab scenario. But, um, I also want to thank my wife, Kendall. Um, she's the rock of the family, just like uh, we had uh, talked about earlier with some of the other coaches. She allows me to go to the office every, every day and be a middle-aged uh, adolescent and hang out and have fun with a bunch of kids while she's working, taking the kids to school, fixing lunches, doctor practices. You know, we have two boys at home that both play sports. She's on the road. Uh, in fact, she drives my dealer car, don't tell anybody, okay? But I have to turn that thing in really, really quick. Every 5,000 miles, it doesn't take long to do it. So, But she does an unbelievable job. Thank you for everything you do to allow us to do this. Um, my kids, you know, and it's, it's so much fun and so gratifying to me to have my children go uh, through this with us and to uh, watch them grow and be at the games and, uh, watch your your son, you know, I have a, an eighth grade son that comes out in pre-practice and, and plays catch in front of the student body and they're cheering for him. I mean, it just, those are the memories you look back on in life and, and, and for him and myself that you, you'll you cherish forever. When you're in the fourth quarter of your life and you're looking back, those are the type of things that you remember. And this profession allows you to have the ability to enjoy those moments. Um, so I appreciate my children for keeping me grounded and um, the next thing is just, you know, in terms of me personally, um, my last year we played in the Sun Bowl. Uh, I had no idea what I was going to do with myself occupationally. It was me and my roommate, Robert Nunn, who is now the defensive line coach for the uh, Giants. We're sitting in the hotel bar, and uh, Glenn Wolf walks up. He's the head coach at Northeastern Oklahoma Junior College in Miami, Oklahoma, and we're sitting there talking, and he said, hey, uh, you two guys, y'all want to – you want to come out and be uh, coaches, grad assistant coaches at NEO? We hadn't even thought about it. We kind of looked at each other and went, yeah, why not? Sounds like a heck of a deal. What do we got? You know, free place to live, food. Heck, yeah, let's keep the scholarship thing going, you know. So we did that. So I'm excited. I'm very excited. I've made my choice. I'm going to be a ball coach. Now I know what I'm going to do. I cannot wait to tell Coach Jones because, you know, he's been the guy there for me as a player and respected everything he said, his opinion. So um, 
I go to Coach Jones. I say, Coach, uh, I know what I'm going to do with myself. I, I want to tell you. I want your advice. He goes, well, what is it, uh, Meech? I said, well, I'm going to be a football coach, and I'm expecting this, you know, pep rally in his office, this, oh, my gosh. It's all, and that's not what I got at all. I got, are you sure that's what you want to do with your life? And uh, there were times along the way I understood exactly what you meant, Coach. I promise you, because uh, coaching some of the places I did, um, like Coach Herman mentioned, it was pretty lean at times. You know, there's a lot of times when uh, that pizza on the 28th of the month, not sure if that check was going to quite make it, you know. So uh, there was tough times in there along the way, uh, Georgia Military College. And I remember my parents, um, you know, as soon as I got out of college, before Georgia Military, I was a grad assistant coach. And my parents, uh, no one in my family played sports. My dad, my mom, brother, sister, nobody. They had no idea kind of what was going on in terms of what I did for a living or what I was going to do. And, uh, of course, as soon as I graduated from college, my dad's like, okay, it's time to get a job. Get off my insurance. <laughs> All right, let's go. Get a job. So I said, Dad, there's this thing called grad assistant coach that basically makes nothing that you have to do to start this thing off. He didn't get it. Did it three years. Every day, it was like, oh, my gosh, get a job. So I had to live through that and explain every day what the process was. So I get a job at GMC, Georgia Military College, first full-time job. And... Um, I remember thinking, man, I got a degree. That's why, you know, I have an opportunity to do this because I have a degree in college. And, and the first thing I do out of the box is lay sod for two days. And I thought, well, I could have done this without college. You know, and I'm sitting here killing myself laying sod. Equipment manager. Um, in fact, my wife helped me put helmet decals on the helmets at one point. She was the only one that helped me, and I bought a case of beer, and then everybody wanted to help me. <laughs> so there's all kinds of people in there. But just going through that, driving buses, Watering fields, mowing fields, handing out gear, film coach, recruiting coordinator, all the things you do at the lower level. Um, really, throughout my career, and you know, particularly in the last few years, looking back on those moments, uh, I cherish every bit of it because it's helped me along the way be grateful for the opportunity I have now at TCU and the opportunity I've had at Oklahoma State and Houston and some of the other places I've been. And the, the, the ability to be around some of the the people I've been around, you know, Boone Pickens, uh, been around Dana Holgerson, Mike Leach, um, uh, Larry Fedora, um, a lot of guys, Todd Munkin, that's kind of helped develop me in terms of what my philosophies are mentally, uh, offensively, and my philosophies are as a coach, and uh, Coach Jones as well. And then uh, finally get a call from TCU and uh, get an opportunity there, and, and what a, what a um, really interesting uh, combination of a defensive school and Coach Patterson. And I made sure, I said, now you know what I am. All right? I want to make sure you know we throw the football. This is what we're going to do. And he was all in. And so it was really interesting integrating a, from a defensive school, integrating an offensive philosophy that was more pass-oriented and how we developed the practice routine and how we did it. It was really fun uh, with him and uh, Chris Delacani, the athletic director. Those guys have been phenomenal to me, and I uh, appreciate the opportunity. And uh, just very grateful. And uh, I just thank, thank you for the opportunity to stand up here in front of you. And um, that's, that's it. Thank you.